Hey, Rob. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I'm just going to see if I can reshare this link. Did you did you click from the original um, meeting invite? From the original one, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so hold on, let's still get. Uh... Oh, here's Erica. Oh, hey, Erica, I'm going to make you a panelist here. Oh, okay. Hi. Morning. Morning. Good morning. I think we're just waiting for Carol. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to reset her the link. Yeah, I had to put my email address in, so maybe she got a little oh, confused. Maybe, yeah. So I just sent her the link again. Do you want me to text her to see if, uh, I'll just tell her that you sent it again. Okay, okay. sure. Should we? Yeah, we probably should start. Yeah, it's five after. Yeah, I'll keep an to... eye on various email and text threads to make sure she's not stranded somewhere. Sure, sure. Great. Hey, Shelly. So, um, any thoughts on how we should do this? Just jump in to review the draft goals or uh, just just jump in? Yeah, I think we should just jump in. Okay, do you have them in, are you able to have them in front of you or should we share a screen? Uh, I, can... I can never figure out how to split my screen, but I do have them if I go on there and then not see you guys. <laughs> we, can, we can share them on the screen if that's... Um... Sure. Is that easy for you to do, Greg? Yeah, yeah. here we go. Yeah, that would um, be easy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I did publish a very basic agenda, which is just review draft goals and notes and then discussion <laughs> and then next steps. So, right. Um, all right. So hopefully whatever we do fits into that. All right. Um, oh, hopefully. That's the agenda. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there there it is. we go. Right. Zoom in here a little bit. Thank you. Oh, they changed Adobe on me. Where's my Zoom? Is that is that too big or is that still visible? That's good. Okay. That's good. I think that's good. Okay. So broken down in based on our discussion, one, a development focused one to funding for the trust, and then three, the, the discussion around market pressures. So with development, it's um, pretty simple, but it's making sure that you feel comfortable with the numbers. So supporting the creation of 250 homes affordable to people earning below 100% AMI over the next five years. So I need how that feels, the number, the 100% AMI, the five years, uh, so I just wanted to point out that Grover's was 300, um, and I thought 250 is more probably realistic. 
uh, within five years, but I just wanted to, to just add that she had 300 over the five years. And Greg and I noted that, and I think that we both felt like 250 felt a little bit more realistic as well. I think so too. Like enough of a stretch, but not quite where it might feel a little bit overwhelming. Right, right. Just from experience with the past few years that I've been on the trust, I think 250 is much more realistic. And it, it's still um, a good, I think, aggressive, you know, housing can take a long time to, to make it happen. So absolutely. It's a, it's a nice round number. I mean, it's 50 a year. 300 is like too specific. You want actually 60 a year. Where, where does that number come from? But 50 is, is you know, a normal so yeah i mean yeah that's um and i think we can kind of just bring that back to the large group and offer that context and mm -hmm. you know see where because yeah but i think 250 is aggressive and i think we're talking just narrowly about something the trust has its hands on in some fashion right so if somebody builds inclusionary or somebody um I can't imagine someone will go to CPA and not us, but you know, that, the, the, you know, so that. I think that what, yeah. so from these goals, then we'll start um, developing strategies under each one that'll better explain the goal, the intent of the goal and how you expect to reach it. But I, I think that if there are inclusionary units and it's a development that needs a special permit and the trust is actively engaged in supporting it. I think that those still count. So I don't I, think it's just ones that you fund. I also think that's why I use the word support instead of just fund because I okay. think there are a lot of different ways to help support affordable housing and that the trust should, you know, get credit for the work that it does locally. So and advocacy or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think 250 is still, I mean, <laughs> I'd be thrilled, <laughs> you know. I so, think it's aggressive enough, but yeah. um, it, it could be doable for Amherst. Yep, I agree. Absolutely. So does 100% AMI, that fits in with how you, your language and your the way that the trust functions? 100% AMI? Below, so we have below 100% AMI. So I think that's, yeah, yeah that's good. Yep. Okay. But it's not 80, hundred is, is right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think it's, let's propose it. Let's see what the group thinks, but I think a hundred, because we say below a hundred, it, you know, mm -hmm. it could be 80, could be 60, could be 50. Yeah. Um, so I, I think some strategies might emerge mm -hmm. underneath that, you know, like let's, and maybe not breaking down numbers, but say like perhaps the trust effort should, you know, roughly be, be split into, you know, half of our efforts aimed at below 50% and, and half the full scope or something like that. Um, but we can talk that out. Yep. And that gets into Grover's concerns a little bit too, of having some more deeply affordable housing. Yep. So yep. with the funding goal, uh, so we're saying 4 million over the next five years to support the trust work. And that that's a pretty ambitious goal. How does that feel? So um, I, I thought about that one, and I'm just wondering if that that number two should be a little broader. And uh, this is just brainstorming, so you know, please tear it apart. But I was thinking, you know, not just funding, but resources. So maybe expanding resources that could include funding ant land. Um, so unless we we think that funding includes land, um, I just think. It's the resources. Um, yes, having 4 million absolutely gives us more resources, but we might be able to get land that's valued at a certain amount um, to put towards that 4 million, because that's a, that's a lot. Even though we might get 1.2 right now. Um, I mean, I've been on the trust since you know 2019. This is the first time we've ever had such a large amount being provided to us. And I know that we're looking at strategies to fundraise, et cetera, but fundraising, I mean, we're, we got to be careful that we're not competing against, you know, such like, you know, the Amherst, you know, Community Land Trust or other places that are fundraising. So I'm just, um, you know, unless the transfer fee gets passed, um, I really think that we might want to have this as expanded resources. But again, I'm just putting this out there for the group to tear apart. So that makes a lot of sense to me. You could say $4 million in assets. That's a good point. I think that's a good point in assets. 
So the land donation, <clears throat> I was kind of imagining that could be under a strategy for development as well. So um, hmm. does it need to be exclusive? Think so. I think it makes the <clears throat> funding line a little bit more muddy, oh. um, but maybe not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think good, good, Rob. Um, so, so, so it's one thing to acquire property or whatever. There's another thing to to build the homes. I mean, even if we got a $4 million property, we'd still have to put an RFP out because we're not going to do the development. We need to find someone who's willing to do a 250 unit development, you know. So I don't think it money's it. I think it's it makes sense to, to have them both. To, to have them both. I mean, I think it preserves some, some flexibility depending on events, you know, um, uh, and to get radically ahead of myself um you know there you know uh, eric and i took a very compelling trip to father bills uh last week um and learned that there was the wonderful facility we visited uh was in part supported by a significant amount of private fundraising um you know a, a lot of hurdles to jump through there you know but that could be a role in three years you know um um, so point being that might, that might be a direction or, you know, maybe we go deep on relationships to institutions and our efforts are focused on, you know, getting land donations, you know, that I, I, I guess, I, I guess I'm saying having some, like it, it is a little bit muddy, but it's also, I sort of see some, uh, flexibility if we have it in both, which might be healthy. Yeah, you know, my my only challenge, and I know, uh, you know, it's part of my nature, so I'm just gonna put this out there, is that this is so specific. I know that, you know, action plans are supposed to be very specific, but I feel sometimes if it's so specific, it, it leaves other things out. So for me having, I really like uh, securing 4 million in assets, because that gives it, you know, gives a little bit more uh, flexibility, as, as Greg said, in terms of looking at, you know, people donating houses, people donating land. Um, it, it just gives us a little bit more play. So I, th my concern is that then I think the strategies under development and funding are, are too similar. So if the, if, a, if, if, if funding is assets, four million assets, including land donations, then a strategy would be to secure a land donation for disposition, but that would be a strategy under development as well. So that's kind of my concern is that they're just, the strategies will end up being too similar or overlapping or the same. Hmm. Because development is all about new units. So that means that would include municipal land or land acquisition to support development. Whereas funding is more, um, it's the, a, so even if there's a land donation, then communities typically have to contribute to the development of the units as well. So they're they're not always the same thing. There's kind of um, pieces of the. Problem. All right. So let's note those points down. I think. Yeah. Sorry. So I think I have a, a problem with my bandwidth. So I'm sorry. I'm, it says unstable network. So if I interrupt, I'm really sorry. Um, I think we should note that. I think we should note that because that sort of makes sense, um, Shelley. Um, let's note that um, and it would help, you know, with our larger conversation in May with the larger group of why we did it this way. Um, so I would see you saying that, you know, if we've just focused on funding, then, you know, some of the strategies would be um, very much like, you know, focusing on the land transfer, um, you know, making sure that <laughs> the payment in lieu of is uh, current, current, uh, uh, using current data versus old data. Um, so we can actually get the, the real amount for that, um, you know, transfer fee advocacy, possibly, you know, asking um, the CPA to, instead of us having to go every year to 
give us an amount without having to go every year, you know, things like that, I suppose, could fit under the funding. I'm just trying to think of, you know, what are the different pieces to, to really distinguish the funding from the development? Mm -hmm. So what I can do is I can just do some draft, I note ideas of, of how we, these would be distinguished. Okay. And I get that to you first, but then to help with the, the broader board to, to keep them separated out a little bit. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So clearly the one that we struggled with the most is the market pressure conversation and just how it's such the elephant in the room all the time with Amherst. And what does that mean for the, we spent probably 20 minutes or whatever in the new meeting on, um, on this conversation. And so, and so I think that that's really what we need to spend some time today of digging into of how do we reflect that we heard what the group was saying at the same time, be realistic about the trust role in the community. So we tried a couple of things of like developing a program to intercept the corporate purchases, which is basically like a buy down program where you would um, purchase a single family home and resell them or help a family purchase them and contribute funds and put a restriction on it. Some kind of program like that to, to try to uh, intercept, but you know, 20 units over three years, it's, that's, that's actually quite ambitious. You'd need a lot of capital to do that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a heavy lift. So there need to be some entity that manages the program. It can't be volunteer managed. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it'd be a lot for a little in terms of units. It could be meaningful, but it'd be a lot for, for us, a, a smallish number. And then um, the other idea was something with UMass of persuading them to build more housing. Um, but then as we talked about it more, like that doesn't really fall under creating and preserving affordable housing, which is the purpose of the trust. So then that felt like it's getting away from the purpose. And then some thought of, do we completely switch gears and just think of a really different kind of um, model that perhaps supporting limited equity model something that seems that perhaps um, just a different kind of tool perhaps in Amherst. So just wondering what some of your thoughts are at this point of how we should move forward on this. And I think that the note that I put in uh, so, email to you was some thinking of um, like, um, so I'm just gonna read my words. Perhaps the best role for the trust with market pressures is support is a supporting role, but not a leading role. Would it make sense for the trust to focus its efforts more narrowly on increasing the supply of affordable housing? So more narrow of saying this is we're increasing the supply of affordable housing. That's what our main thing. And then maybe there's a supporting role um, with market pressures with UMass conversation. So last um trust meeting, uh I don't know if it was you, Greg, I think it was Dave. Uh, Dave Zomack um, gave us a little bit of a, a briefing of um, meetings with UMass. And one of the things that had come up uh, for us was possibly meeting with UMass with the planning board. And um, they, want, they wanted to point out to Dave and to Paul who meets with them weekly, um, that there's an agreement that housing could be part of the discussion and they felt that they should meet with the town leads, not meet with all the different uh, boards or uh, trusts, et cetera. Um, and so I think what we had agreed to was that we'd come up with some points, questions, comments, recommendations to give to them to then for them to be the leads uh, in talking to UMass about issues such as affordable housing or the impact of their policies on uh, the housing stock, et cetera. So I think we've pulled back a little bit. Um, and um, Rob, I think you were concerned about our role um, being the lead uh, with UMass as well, and that may not be appropriate. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with you, Shelley. Um, I sort of you know, rethought this area as well. Um, and I, agree that I think, you know, when, when I thought of it, I thought, well, marketing, is it really marketing pressures or marketing, uh, which is what you just, I think, just talked about in terms of, um, 
getting more community engagement and thinking about how they can support affordable housing, either the projects that we're working with or initiatives that we're working with, or if they're thinking about selling and downsizing, you know, what are the options besides just going, you know, selling it to outside marketers or venture capitalists? You know, there's, you know, the Amherst, you know, um, land trust, there's selling it to, possibly to the town, um, thinking things about how each of us community members impacts or can impact affordable housing here. Um, and so that's, you know, it's probably advocacy, that's probably education, but it's to me also sort of a large under marketing in terms of increasing affordable housing, but getting people to buy into that they can actually be active in doing that in some way. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so the board is feeling comfortable with more of a supporting role versus a driving role. Yeah, that's good. I think so. Um... Yeah, I mean, do we, I'm trying to recall, you know, did we hear, Erica, do you recall, or Rob, do you recall if we heard reflections on that from folks uh, on that, you know, sort of backing off the direct engagement with UMass and more, like, more to sort of, like, I don't know, we reported it out, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit cloudy on what people's response was to that. Yeah, yeah I think there wasn't, um, I think people, there wasn't a, a, a strong response. In other words, there was no pushback um, and there was sort of an acceptance of what, as, as Erica was saying, uh, acceptance that somebody else will have to take the lead. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like a strongly stated thing. So I, I don't think it's, okay. I don't think it would be uh, objectionable for, for us to report back that we don't have a, uh, leading role to play in, in, in the market pressure area. Yeah, and, and I think, but yeah, I mean, like shifting market pressures to marketing or community engagement more broadly, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I can think of crafty ways, you know, to incorporate sort of UMass engagement into that, right? But without necessarily it being like, a campaign, you know what I mean? Like more so like, you know, and, and Dave, you know, has made the point, you know, directly to me that like, and I think in the meeting too, you know, things like, you know, when we're doing, you know, when we're, when we're doing public outreach for a project or, you know, you know, whatever that we make a point of involving different UMass stakeholders, for example, you know, um, um, you know, and, you know, and, 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 you know, in that case, build relationships, you know, and I think, you know, out, outside of the sort of leadership cohort at UMass, but, you know, different sort of individual players at UMass, you know, I think that can, that can fold easily into engaging the community as a whole, you know, on, you know, on different models on what individual actions could be, um, et cetera. So that works for me, I guess, is the so aren't you, um, you're engaging in a, an update of your housing production plan? Yeah, correct? yeah. So we could, we could totally, you so know. Instead of a market pressures, like a third goal could be something around community engagement. And um, I, I, cause I do think that under development that a strategy should be to engage with UMass about the possibility of a land donation. Like I, I find that really interesting. So I think that that should be a strategy under development. But um, there, there, you know, in, in every community, there's always room for more public engagement and education, and the trust can play a really important role with that. And if you have a housing production plan process coming up, then that's something uh, that, that could be a way to kind of kickstart for this coming yeah. year, some interaction with the community. And I know that your trust in the past has oftentimes done at least an annual kind of public meeting to get feedback from the community and um, so you have that, that as kind of part of your, um, your culture. So I, I think maybe instead of a market, this kind of market pressure ideas, maybe it's something that's around your role in education and, um, public engagement. Sure. Yeah, I like the way you put it in terms of, you know, uh, our role being to, to keep affordable housing as a priority for the for the town 
it's you know something very bold saying you know that that is it's going to be our role to make sure that it stays as a priority um and then you know we could do the education advocacy et cetera, underneath it yeah and i think yeah I, you know and in, increasingly i feel like certain like engagement and then like you know, it's generic terms but like engagement and education specifically and that i think a key role the trust can play is you know doing our best to kind of educate folks on the just the parameters of this work you know i mean i think that's where the sort of the community um you know the the, the delta is between community commitment and community understanding is like well if you want it to be affordable it probably has to be three stories you know like it's not going to be it's not going to look precisely like the 150 year old brick building you love you know it's going to be a little more you know things like that and 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 you know in, inviting folks to engage uh with those trade-offs you know um as a as i think what what where communities get stuck certainly including ours is like with you in spirit but when it comes to practical impl implementation is when we get you know all of the the complaints and i think um mm -hmm. taking people along the path of you know of of what your conceptual support needs to translate to you when it comes to an actual development um I, mean, I think that's that's a chewy thing that i think that's that's good work to do i think in, in the engagement sense so yeah cool so um could you imagine to make it measurable could you imagine that there be a goal around <clears throat> a, a number of engagements each year or a, as a goal um or educational, um, like educational. Uh, I think, it, it, yeah, I could see a engagement. Like education and engagement, a, a certain number of. I could definitely. Intentional activities each year. And do you think, can you think of a number that feels comfortable to you or realistic? Like a quarterly kind of thing, like four, or is that too much? Three, two. Well, it depends what it, what we talk about in terms of engagement. So, um, I, I think you know, we we've been taking I think on more of um, watching, for example, what the planning board does, and we just submitted a, a memo regarding uh, the Wayfinders project because we had some concerns about the memo that was coming from the planning board, um, and we're looking at the overlay. Um, and so, I think we're now engaging a little bit more with other parts of you know um, town. Uh, committees that impact affordable housing or increased housing. Um, I mean, I think, you know, we've, we've never presented in front of the town council um, and we just go to CPA to ask for money. But I think one of your recommendations was actually to have a collaborative meeting with the CPA. Um, with the town council, we actually had a collaborative meeting with the uh, CRC um, because we have sort of intersecting interests. So, I mean, I think if we make engagement uh, at least with the community members twice, but possibly with two, the town council or other subgroups that impact affordable housing, I think four would be fine. Mm -hmm. Yearly. Um, do, do you imagine that uh, those um, public meetings for the Wayfinders project would count as, as, as this, or, or are we talking about a broader uh, engagement rather than a specific issue so if if the i might put your wayfinder support under development because you're right you're very intentionally trying to support a certain number of units so i probably would put that under that and i, I think that if it's more of education and public engagement that it would probably be broader around like the housing production plan and educating people on the housing needs um uh yeah i mean and go ahead I, yeah i was thinking i'm looking at it and you know it seems like there's there's a few categories there's events you know like public forum type stuff you know there's sort of committee specific things like how we communicate with the select board how we communicate with um mm -hmm. our council sorry how we communicate with uh cpa you know different um the planning board zba 
that's kind of a, a, a specific vector, you know, and then there's, there's conceivably one-on-ones, you know, to be done, you know, I mean, like, so I think, uh, you know, and, and I don't, you know, and I, and I think the actual work probably is spread across those. And there's also like general communication work, you know, we could do, you know, um, more just traditional marketing or, you know, you know, mass communication type stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I think, think- Oh, that whole spectrum kind of would support the goal. So I'm, I'm just trying to think how how to make a goal that would potentially capture different levels of granularity. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that if you do a, a joint, if you did end up doing a joint meeting between the trust and any of these other boards, it could be made into a more public engagement where you invite more broadly for people to participate in this conversation and to help kind of inform the relationship and you know, with the CPC to reaffirm the need for CPA funds to go towards housing, you want other activists to be a part of that. And so I think that all that could go under, I think, and I think we probably need to be broad because four events a year for a volunteer board and of course, Greg's support um, can feel a lot really fast. So I think that we need to be broad with how we, um, with understanding that a lot of these different venues can go a long way to educating the community and bringing people along. I mean, what if we just throwing something out there, you know, I mean, I I would sort of cash an event quote unquote as like, you know, uh, kind of like the listening session, Erica, that you did last year in June, you know, or um, outside of a regular committee meeting, maybe, you know, Um, But what if, you know, versus like a committee collaboration, like a joint meeting with this, with the planning board or whatever, um, you know, I mean, what if we did like, you know, two sort of non-moored events, you know, and then two, um, call them committee collaborations for for, for lack of a, a more explicit term. Does, does that seem... Uh, doable. So under four events, you're you're saying so. For example, um, so in May we're going to have the um, African Heritage Reparation Assembly come um, and have a conversation with them. Would that count as the sort of committee one, a little bit more committee, but not really the community one? Um, I guess in my head for a committee collaboration, you know, that would concept I've just created here, I'd be thinking more, probably something with some level of intentional outputs named in advance, you know, like we want to meet with the planning board because we want them to understand the urgency of X, Y, Z, you know, versus like, I think the reparations, I guess the reparations group is an official committee and, and maybe that one could emerge. It's kind of unique. It could emerge into a more s- substantial collaboration. But I think, it, it, I guess maybe I would differentiate by saying if our intention was to come out of it with like next steps together, or here's what we learned, here's how we're going to apply some of the priorities we heard from the reparations group for how we hope they'll apply something. That to me would seem like more of a the level of collaboration versus just the sort of uh, the, the PowerPoint presentation and, and a few questions would seem more like in the, in the vein of a regular committee, a regular uh, in uh, housing trust meeting. Does that make sense as, as differentiation? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like the listening session with the Human Rights Committee, the uh, Board of Health, et cetera. It was planned together. We did it together uh, and we, you know, discuss the outcomes together versus just having them come to our meeting, just talk about what they think we should be doing. I get it. Yeah. The former seems a little more substantial. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So under that, would we also have um, the legislative advocacy that we do? Because it's something that's really important in maintaining our connections, especially with, you know, our representative Dom, who's been phenomenal in supporting us, but, you know, just watching, 
we sort of monitor what's happening legislatively and then try to get support for that. And uh, often Carol and I will write letters in support of specific legislation. So um, I think it, 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 some of it, it, it comes either you have a separate goal that's kind of focusing on that or pieces like your advocacy for the transfer fee could go under funding as a strategy under funding. So I think it's either putting this kind of the buckets under these three goals, or it's having a separate goal that feels like it's um, not sufficient to put pieces of it under the existing goals. I feel they could fit under the existing goals. goals. As strategies, right? Yeah, because we're under development, we're, you know, we're trying to, well, I suppose we're trying to increase uh, funding in any sort of resources for developers, for us to mm -hmm. increase development. Um, yeah. And then definitely transfer fee under the funding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it feels like, yeah, if we house them under existing goals that we have here as strategies, it might help surface you know two or three key advocacy items you know i mean you know erica you and carol are really good about kind of covering the whole range but it may be that the group is like hey we really care about you know transfer fee and you know uh i don't know what else might come to the service you know without doing the discernment but i, I think we might embed sort of more active engagement with a smaller number of, of legislative things that would help us. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Does um, Amherst designate any short-term rental fees towards housing, or is those allocated to other other things? Um, to, at, at this time, we do not. Um, but I, it, it's an area I'm I'm interested in. Um, I had a hard time discerning. Precisely, like a, there, there's some state reporting documents I, I was looking at a couple months ago and I couldn't quite figure out how much money we're getting or if we have a named destination for them or what. So wouldn't the, um, I'm forgetting what his name is, the town administrator that's on your board, would he be able to outline that a little bit better? Dave. Dave. Oh, that's Dave. Paul, Paul, Paul's on the board. Dave, Dave Paul, often Paul. comes as the assistant town manager. Um, Oh wait, say that again. Who uh, so 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 technically, Paul is the, is is the member of the board. He's the town yeah. manager. Dave often joins us um, in in his place, um, but is a a, a non voting. Um, advisor, so wait, I guess. so Paul though is the town administrator, right? Yes, and 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 Dave, or town manager, I think, is the uh, official title, and Dave is the assistant town manager. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we we usually meet with um, Dave. Uh, and um, Nate uh, and Greg and Carol and I to talk about the meeting and what the town can report on. So it could be something we can ask Dave to report on. Um, Paul, is, even though he's on our board and he's the town manager, um, he tends to be a little quiet. So, um, you know, we do a planning meeting where we specifically ask the town to report on specific issues that come up. So that is something we can ask Dave to do. So do you think that that's Paul because of like um, political strategy, like just being um, more conservative in what he says? Not sure. Personality, he doesn't seem like he's shy. When he has something to say, he certainly says it, especially when it has to do with something that he disagrees with. <laughs> he's pretty adamant. Um, Mm. Yeah, he just, I think it's, I think he's just very judicious about mm. his input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Mm. Okay. But so you know, it's, it, I'm sorry, I, I keep on interrupting you. Um, but you know, that's one of the reasons why we do have a planning meeting before the meeting. And um, we have no problems asking Dave. And if Dave doesn't, uh, is not available, then usually um, Nate will report for him or Greg um, will report on particular things that we ask for. So, um, you know, it's, it, they, 
we always have somebody from the town who will give us answers, uh, yeah. sometimes as much as they can give us. And Sh Shelley, is there a list anywhere of, of, of communities that use short-term rental fees for housing or housing trusts or is there? I don't think that there's any formal lists. Um, I don't think that the state collects that kind of information, but there are communities that have used short-term rental um, Brewster, so we were just on a meeting was it yesterday with Brewster and um, theirs is 40 or 60% goes to their trust. Um, and it's... Wellfleet is seeking a significant portion of theirs. Gloucester has used some short-term rental for housing. So there are, there are some examples, although um, I don't think it's a lot yet, but there are examples of that. Isn't, isn't there something in the law that says that there has to be a percentage that goes to? I think it's something or something else. Okay. We'll check that, but I, I think it's something or. So I think that some of the case communities actually use it for infrastructure, I think, and I think that's allowed. But um, but there, there, there are some communities and it definitely gets talked about. And it's I think the hardest one is the if the community already relies on it to fund other things, then it can be hard to. So I I try to sort of uh, look at a budget document <laughs> sort of with mixed success, but it seems like I think that's what's happening here now. It gets folded into the general budget, I believe, um, which in the short term seems to me like it would be a lift, but but uh, but in the medium term seems like something should um like like it's an area for for export like service in the idea you know i think makes sense i guess it could be a, a strategy under funding is to yep. push forward or advocate for 20 percent or like something that feels more modest at the beginning mm -hmm. to try to get that for the that the trust I mean, it seems like sound public policy you know budget demands aside it, it you know I mean, the whole thing of short term yeah. rentals is that it puts a pressure on the housing market. So you would hope yeah. that some of that would go towards housing. Yeah. Counter that. And there are a number of Airbnb rentals here in Amherst. So I'm sure I would imagine. Okay. So I'll um, do a little bit of work on a third goal, a draft third goal for you. And I'm, I'll do a little bit of some like, what what strategies could look like under these different goals just to help help us start moving in that direction um can you remind me when your next when your may meeting is uh, it is may 9th, 9th. yeah correct may oh, 9th oh so two weeks from now to yep. may 9th and and what you start your meetings at what time 7 7 p.m um, so we're going to have a presentation first um, by the um, African Heritage uh, Reparation Assembly. So we're then going to, we really want to keep these two topics only because uh, we think it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So the second half of the meeting should be focused on uh, specifically this. Um, we had another conversation that came up last time that uh, we thought might have um, some time, but I doubt it, uh, which is the overlay. Um, I just don't think we'll have enough time to, to go over that. And then for half, do you imagine that this would come on at about 7.45 or 8 o'clock? I would say 7.45. What do you think, Rob, Greg? I oh. mean, uh, go ahead, Rob. You have... I, th I think it might be later than that. I think it might be closer to eight, but. Okay, 7.45, eight o'clock, okay. Yeah. And we can time it too. So, you know, if if the first is a little shorter, we'll put something in between. Um, so let's just say eight o'clock um, because I think you're, you're trying to figure out when to be on, right, Shelley? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll put you on at eight on the agenda. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, good. Okay, so. Um, that gives us two weeks. That's good. So we have enough time. So um, I'll do some work on this today and hopefully get it to you by the end of today or tomorrow and hopefully include Carol in some of this before sending anything to the full board. But I think if they just have this document, we just focus on helping to, to um, bring everyone onto the same page around being okay with the goals. 
And then I don't think we should dig into strategies too much at that point. Um, just use the draft as like, these are the kinds that we will work on developing. I'm sure that some people will probably want to comment. I think our main goal should just be that we're on the same page with the goals. And then this group will dig in deeper about, start to build out some proposed strategies to take back to the full board. Does that seem okay? I think it's good. Um, we also shared with them, um, you know, some of the recommendations you made um, to us. Um, and so I'm sure they'll come up again, uh, especially around um, priority uh, populations. Um, but I think it might be useful to reiterate um, how we got here, because um, that'll help people understand, you know, how we got to these specifics, because, you know, I, I struggle again with specifics versus a little bit, um, you know, more general. Okay. Do you mean how we got here, like how we got to these, narrowed down to these focuses? Yeah, like even today, just the conversation we had around what fits under development, what fits okay. under funding. You know, yeah. it, it just helps people to understand that we have had these conversations. We just didn't pull these out and didn't consider, you know, what, what people's thoughts were. Got it. Mm -hmm. And also just, I think, you know, and specifically looking at the development number, I think, you know, contextualizing that this is a number that reflects not what might be needed, you know, but what we think is a realistic stretch goal for us, you know, for us. Cause I think if, if somebody said, well, Amherst needs 500 homes, you know, like that's true, but we also, you know, given the context that we think we can realistically aspire to this number um, that we're involved in. Um, and then I would also say too, I don't think that I agree. We don't need to delve and should not delve deeply into the specific strategies, but in whatever we present to them, if we could just name some examples of strategies, mm -hmm. you know, I think that will go a long way to sort of like, like for you're thinking about Grover, you know, uh, who, you know, is great in, in supporting us to be, you know, to, to, to push for affordability, you know, so an example might be like pushing for, you know, half of our efforts to make sure that we focus on below 50 as, you know, and we could even say, we'll refine these strategies later, you know, but I think just demonstrating how we could, an example of a specific as opposed to a promise of specifics will probably help folks. Yeah. So I, I actually do want to add some um, like possible strategies on this document so they will get it up front. My concern is just that they'll jump to the weeds and then we won't have agreement on the broader goals and then that that will that will just um, set us back. So like, you know, just don't want them to jump to the to the weeds before we decide on before we are in agreement on the broader goals. But definitely, so I, I, think, I think we should have some examples of strategies yeah. so that people understand kind of how we're thinking about these buckets. Yeah, and we can ask Erica and Carol to remind us that we're we're agreeing on goals and we have, you know, example you know generic examples of strategies. I think that's yes a good facilitation objective. Uh, yeah. I think the, there could be two documents: one that just says goals. And then one that says goals with with draft strategy. Sure, so, that's the way I do it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also um, a good reminder is that you know we work in conjunction with a larger document in a larger group, which is the town council. Which you know they have much broader goals, much you know the comprehensive um, housing plan, and we're trying to find out what our niche is so we can stay focused because we have limited people and limited um, you know resources. And then with the you know um, the, the housing plan that you're doing. Um, that's another piece too. So, and then in the CPA uh, right now, they, they tend to um, also provide funding to all kinds of housing initiatives as well. So we, we don't have to be all do all. And what we're trying to figure out is where's where's our best focus in terms of how Carol says is the, the biggest bang for the buck. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. Great. Great conversation. Right. Thank you so much. So, yeah. uh, you. so I, I will try to get something to you by the end of today. It might be tomorrow. And then hopefully Carol will, will be able to um, weigh in as well. And 
so the meeting is on the ninth. So then hopefully we can get this out to them in plenty of time for people to review it before the meeting. Great. I think, should, why don't we say, can we just give the goal of next Thursday, one week to try to have something that we're comfortable with giving to the whole board? Yep. On May 2nd. Yep. yep. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Great. Thanks so much. It was a great conversation. I appreciate it. Likewise. Thanks, Thank Shelley. you so very much. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. America.